Woo -hoo. It's fresh pow and I gotta get out there. I got my, uh, my new GoPro here and yeah. let's get into it. I'm gonna try and adjust my board. trip in general was incredible because it was a AST plus course. So what I think they're targeting with this is kind of between the AST one and AST two, um, or just past AST two with the right group. But basically what they're doing is they're just pairing you up with a professional guide who's there to teach you. So the day before we went ski touring, we all got on a Skype call together and Joe shared his screen and showed everybody kind of what he goes through when he's making decisions for the next day. And it was a great opportunity because the conditions for the next day were horrible, according to the bulletin. They were all red, super high danger, um, not extreme, but um, definitely dangerous in alpine tree line and below tree line. So he walked us through that. He said, hey, this is what the bulletin's showing. This is where you can see where people have inputted their own reports and we go by all this information to understand what the day is going to be like. So judging by, and we can only go by what we can see. So judging by what we saw, a uh, bunch of fresh snow, wind loading, we were just going to go, uh, which <laughs> made my wife nervous, but we were going to go, and but we were going to stick to very, very low risk terrain. And that was our plan. And we would make more decisions the next day. And he was sure to make sure everybody in the group understood that these are the risks we're taking. This is how we're going to mitigate as much risk as we can. Is everybody comfortable with this? And having that discussion the day before was really good. Uh, the day of, we showed up early. Everybody showed up on time and we ended up heading up uh, the lift to get some lift access uh, ski touring and in some nearly inbound terrain that, uh, that Joe obviously knew quite well and you could see on the fat map that uh, there's very little consequence of sliding in this area and very little triggers and terrain traps and all that. So we ended up going out there and on the way you can just see his mind going crazy and all the crazy being like taking in so much information and it got us being able to do a run on the resort gave us a good idea of the ability of the people that were on the course right so they weren't all professional skiers they were different variety of skill levels so we had to take that into account when we thought about how long we're going to make this skin track track up uh, where are we going to go how many breaks are we going to take what terrain do we think they're going to want to get to because they are still new to all this so we ended up doing this great route found a good way skies opened up turned to bluebird which was not expected so with the bluebird and with being able to skin up, we had a really good idea of what the snow conditions were actually on that aspect, on that day, with the wind loading and fresh snow that we had, right? So it was quite stable. We could tell by the skin up, there was no whooping, there was no small slides, even the pinwheels were just consistent. They weren't tracking snow and then accumulating into larger falls. So all of that kind of comes into play and saying, it's more stable than we think, but we still 
want to be cautious. We don't have that confidence in the area, the terrain. It was a new group that we didn't know everybody, right? It might be a different thing. Joe brought up a couple really good points of saying that um, with a group that you know better and have more confidence in their skiing ability and their avalanche uh, knowledge base, you might be able to approach slightly more difficult terrain um, with different mitigation methods to take out that risk or reduce it as much as possible. And that was something that uh, was really cool for me to learn. So some big tips I got out of the day. Uh, one is preparation is key, um, but it's not everything. So having the preparation to go onto the avalanche.ca and review the bulletin for the day in the area, which is new to the island and is great. Um, doesn't give you every bit of information, right? It gives you historical information and predictions. And when you get to the resort the next day, Joe had a really good thing about talking to the group and saying, are we comfortable? Do we know where we're going? Um, do we want to go further or less risk? How do we want to approach the day? And I think that was really important to get that group's input on that. And that's something I really took from it. But uh, that was really good. Um, group dynamics, um, uh, how the group played together throughout the day was really, really important. And then seeing how the, uh, how the day played out and how conditions changed. And having Joe there to ask questions of and for him to stop, dig a little pit, show everybody, hey, this is what we're going to see. Or this is what we're seeing today. And actually, at the end of the day, Joe said, hey, everybody go back on the avalanche.ca read the bulletin from today and he actually did the snow pit that day so you could go look at the snow pit that you just witnessed Joe do as a professional and writing it professionally in the operations level of uh, terminology and really understand okay this is what he meant when he said this as for the photography again this is something I'm looking to improve um, I'm super appreciative of Island Alpine Guides for giving me the opportunity to get out and take better pictures. But uh, yeah, what I found was it was Bluebird, so it was quite good. Um, I kept a small package. I had the AS, uh, A7 III with the 18 to 105 F4 lens. That is just this tank lens that I just love. It's just a perfect size for this kind of stuff with lots of zoom. Um, but saying that, that zoom actually hurt me on the day. So what I found was that we found this really amazing spot, and I'll show some pictures here. Really amazing spot that Joe picked out for us to get these really cool shots with the whole island in the background and even the Georgia Strait uh, way back there. And it was a really, really cool zone and a really amazing frame. But what I didn't take into account is they were up quite a ways. So I, what I was thinking, I was going to take pictures the entire way down, and then once they get to this one perfect framed shot, I'd zoom out and have it at the right thing and I'd let autofocus do all the things. What I found was that while I'm taking pictures and they're coming down, to zoom out you have to stop taking pictures. So it wasn't zooming out smoothly. So next time what I would do is I would just set up the frame and I wouldn't play with the zoom during their ride. And I would make sure the expandable focus zone is still on like it was recommended by somebody in the comments on my last video. <laughs> uh, and have that frame the entire way so that once they get to that point, the autofocus has recognized that's the point I want them. And by the time I get to that point, just ahead of when they get there, uh, I got a perfectly clear shot to capture that. And then I can crop a little bit after. But what I was trying to do was capture it in portrait mode, which Already, I, I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> I don't think I'd do that ever again. Um, and I was trying to zoom and capture it as they were going by, and that's just too much for the camera to handle and for me to try and take in as well, because skiers are quick. So next time what I would do is I would frame it. I would tell them to go. I'd still have it on high continuous, and I'd capture some shots just so that it recognized I want that dot on the white snow. And then I'd pull ahead of them a little bit to that perfect frame I was looking for and then I would just snap those shots just moving a little bit as they went through that frame with the high continuous shutter going 
and that's it. You just you have to commit to the frame you want, and uh, that'll give you the best options. Where I was trying to get portrait mode, 300 good shots, or <laughs> 30 good shots all the way. But really, I ended up with mediocre shots to me. They still turned out quite good, but that one frame would have been absolutely amazing just to nail and have absolutely dial. So I got a great shot that I can have in landscape or crop for an Instagram portrait in a four by five aspect ratio type thing. So that was kind of the lesson learned for photography that day. Um, I like the camera setup. I did all my settings the morning of so it was really easy to pull out. We didn't have a ton of snow or moisture, so it was, it was quite an easy day to take photos. But yeah, that was it.